So, you're thinking of going on a ketogenic diet, also known as keto. Now, some have jokingly called this the bacon diet or dismissed it as a trendy fad, but there's a lot of proven, sound science to back it up. Now, if the world of dietary health and nutrition was a comic book, then carbohydrates are most certainly the big bad villain. Here's why. Carbs are basically just sugar, or anything that turns into sugar once it's in your body. All of this sugar intake causes your body to produce insulin, which can be bad. Insulin causes a whole host of problems like general weight gain, retaining a ton of water, in turn feeling massively bloated all the time, as well as causing a lot of the diseases of civilization like diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. So all in all, this is pretty much how fat people are made. Ironically though, fat people aren't made by consuming fat. Going back to our comic book analogy, if carbs are the supervillain, fat is most assuredly the main hero of the story. Here's why. Shifting to a fat-heavy diet will cause your body to go into a natural process called ketosis. Because you stopped consuming carbs, it's looking for a new energy source. So it uses your liver to start producing these rad little nuggets called ketones and starts burning them for energy. When this happens, you start to lose a ton of weight. Your body flushes all that water it's been holding onto, you feel full more often but not bloated, and your energy levels skyrocket. And it can cure, yes, cure many of those diseases of civilization. And that is how skinny people are made. So how do you achieve this? Well, it comes down to macros, or basically the crap you have to keep track of to get into ketosis. The main players are fat, protein, and carbs. So looking at the nutrition facts is really important. Now, normally, for people eating like garbage, it's easy to go into denial and just not look at this. You don't want to know how awful you're eating. But it's critical for keto people. You have to reckon with this information to be successful. But it's not hard. Just remember these key spots. Fat in grams, protein in grams, and carbohydrates in grams. Then you have this cool little guy that shows the fiber carbs. Fiber is a good carb. You can totally subtract that number from the total carbs. This concept is called net carbs. Now, here's how to properly allocate your macros. A handy pie chart. 70% of your diet should be fat. Let that sink in for a moment. 70%. Now, that might feel weird and sticky to you. And without me going into a tinfoil hat style rant about the government and crooked nutrition studies from the 1950s and how they benefited America's farm workers and tied into political corruption, I'm just gonna say everything you thought you knew about fat is wrong. It's not bad for you. Carbs are the enemy. So break your mind of that old cliche myth that fat is bad. Just accept it you'll soon see the benefits. Anyway, back to the macros. 25% of your intake should be protein and a mere 5% for carbs. So what are some examples of keto-friendly foods? Well, you got your bacon and other fatty meat treats like salami and pepperoni, but don't completely overdo it on those because they also have nitrates and too many nitrates isn't great either. Then you have fatty beef, Salmon, which is an awesome source of omega-3 fatty acids. Avocados have that too. In fact, avocados are like the crown jewel of keto foods. It would be fantastic to learn to like them and incorporate them into your diet. Eggs every morning are great, cooked in extra butter, of course. And lots of olive oil in all of your cooking, in fact. Oh, and here's a pro tip for you, MCT oil. It's a naturally occurring compound in coconut oil. You should definitely take a couple of tablespoons of this a day. It alone has been proven to aid in general weight loss, especially in men. All right then, so what not to eat? Well, bread. Bread is just awful. Every iteration of it. Pasta, any shape or size, bad. Desserts, sweets, anything with that kind of sugar, bad. Fries and even potatoes themselves are a no-no. 
Remember, potatoes aren't even a vegetable. They're a starch and loaded with carbs. Sugary sodas, bad. Fruit juices, no matter how healthy they look on the label, bad. That stuff is loaded with sugar. And coney dogs, bad. Unless, of course, you suckle the dog and cheese from out of the bun and beans. Then perhaps it's okay. Now, about the calories. Overall caloric intake won't break ketosis. Only carbs will. But if you want to boost weight loss, try and keep it under 2,000 calories. Or maybe 16 to 1,800 calories if you really want to step it up. And remember, every diet needs its bro, exercise. Make good use of all those ketones you make and it'll boost your body into making more. And of course, that leads to even more weight loss. Stick to the plan. The first few days will be a little rough. You'll have sugar withdrawals and you'll be craving all kinds of carby foods. But hang in there. When you hit ketosis in about 10 to 15 days, you'll start feeling amazing and those cravings will totally melt away. Good luck, my dude.